Well, ho, 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 it's Sandy Allnock with Holiday Scene Week for 2019. All week long, I'm going to have a whole bunch of videos with holiday background scenes. It's time to get all those Christmas cards colored. So I thought a whole week full of inspiration might be helpful. And on this particular stamp, I am going to be doing something different than I normally do. I'm using a light color first, Grout Gray, to stamp the image onto my Nina cardstock. And it's an MFT ink, and it's, it's a very light one. And I usually use it for some very soft type of coloring. And then I stamped part of the image, just a section of it, in black. And you'll see why when I zoom in in a little bit. And then I stamped the sentiment in red. And I grabbed a bunch of Copic markers and got set to do the coloring. My kind of mental image of this was to have a big snow spray coming off the backside of this bicycle. And that they're going to be riding through the tundra. And you can just feel the motion. I wanted some excitement to this one. And in order to do that, I needed the back end of the image to kind of start to disappear. You could accomplish the same kind of thing by just putting a lot of snow on top. And I am going to be showing you some product that you can use to put snow on top of things like this. However, it's a little easier to get that effect in a more natural way if you just don't put color, or at least don't put dark color, in the sections where you want it to look like it's all fading out. So the black ink you can see is on the bear's head and face and the front end of the bicycle, a little bit on the front of the fox where the fox's head is peeking up, but everything else is in that soft gray ink. And doing the stamping this way using the Misty, which allows you to restamp the image in the same location, is a huge help in accomplishing that kind of stamping. As I do the coloring, I'm using my more contrasting colors in the section where all of the black ink is and letting that slowly get lighter as I get toward the back sections as well. So the R89 is going to be my shadow color in the red for some of the parts that are out in the dark areas. But when we get to the lighter areas, there's that back of the bicycle, I'll put a little bit underneath of them. But that ornament that's hanging out in the the air that's blowing in the in the snow spray, I'm not going to put any of that R89 in the, out there. The dark color there is going to be my mid-tone, and that's going to start to just slowly make all the stuff in the back end be lighter in general. So when I put the snow on top, it's going to be less of a problem overall. So I'll blend in a little bit of mid-tone color here to blend out a little bit of my reds. And then I'm going to jump over to the fox. And I'll use one of my favorite fox coloring combinations, which is a YR04 for the main color, E19, and then a little bit of YR18 to blend them together. And one of the things with this fox, since I stamped him so light, I started losing track of where his leg and his tail were. So I was making a little bit of that up, which is fine because really all I need is for the fox's head to appear to be a fox's head and for it to look like he's holding a Christmas tree. There are very small requirements for this card because there's gonna be all this snow and nobody's gonna know whether or not I got the tail and the leg right on this little guy. So I'm just gonna put snow blobs there and it'll be just fine. So the, the tree hanging down is really cute too. It's, it's kind of got this really droopy shape on top and there's a star hanging off the end, which is kind of cute. I'm trying to picture a polar bear and a fox actually riding across the tundra because, you know, like them on a bicycle in the first place is, of course, unrealistic. But the stamp set is has got the name Woodland in it. These are, you know, supposed to be woodland creatures. So this is probably supposed to be a brown or a black bear. But in my particular case, since I wanted to do an Arctic Tundra type of card, he ended up being a polar bear. So you can make the animal any color you want to, any kind of bear. He would be really fun actually in a forest scene, but he's going to be out in the tundra. So you can do all kinds of different options with this stamp. And there are a couple different stamps in the set. 
I'm going to have another one of the stamps that's in the set colored in Copics over on my Instagram TV channel. And when I do videos over there, just so you know, you're not missing out on any tutorials by me posting them on Instagram TV, but that is just a place for me to do some fun speed coloring. And what I decided to do was I, I make cards beyond what I make here on YouTube. I don't film everything all the time, but there's sometimes when I have a cute idea and I want to share it, but I just get so like my voice is about shot right now trying to do this voiceover. And I get my voice just goes and sometimes I like to film a card, but I just can't get all that voiceover done. So if I can do a quick speed video where you can watch and learn something without me having to go through putting all the colors on the screen, which takes a long time to do and making a full blog post and all that kind of stuff. If I can just do that on a quick Instagram TV video and you can still learn from it, then I'm good to go with that. Hopefully you are too. I give you lots of free content here on YouTube with free tutorials. So hopefully uh, the fact that the Instagram TV doesn't have all the bells and whistles on it is not too big of a problem. So I'm adding some color out here in the distance. I'm trying to stay away from the sentiment because I've stamped it in some Catherine Pooler red ink. And that red ink is going to bleed if I start coloring right over top of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, losing my voice. It is quickly disappearing. But I'm starting to build up a little bit of the color in the snow down there in the foreground. And I'm using that BV31, so I'm even getting a little bit of a purple flavor to it, which is kind of fun. But I want enough color behind here where all that snow spray is going to be, so the snow will show up. If I don't put enough color there, you're going to see nothing for snow. You might see a little texture with what I'm going to be using, but I wanted to have enough color there. And this is an area I thought I totally have wrecked the card now because that's too bright of a blue. I don't have anything that crazy bright. And even though the sky can be that kind of a color, I was actually looking at some pictures of the Arctic when I was doing this and it, I found one that has gorgeous, gorgeous sweep of clouds. Like the color was just over the top. So I ended up pulling out some duller blues to go over top of it and dull back some of the clouds that were there as well as that big blue mass to just go over it with something else so that it would lose some of that sting. It was just too cartoonish and I realize this is not really something you can get realistic with because it's a polar bear and a fox carpooling across the tundra on a bicycle while holding a Christmas tree. So the fact that I'm trying to make something rational and realistic out of it I realize is over the top, but there you go. That is, that's the way I roll, you know? So I feel much better now that the sky is toned down a little bit and I put the mountains in the distance in a little bit of a coordinating color, just continued with that B41. And I threw a little bit of that in the snow as well. And I was trying to make some little striations down there in the snow to make it look like it's kind of crunchy snow. Now here is what I'm using for the snow on here, a Q-tip along with some Daniel Smith watercolor grounds. And it's got the consistency kind of of acrylic paint, so you could use acrylic paint to do this as well. But the watercolor grounds I keep around because I use it for watercolor a lot, and it doubles and works for this as well, so that's good. The Q-tip wasn't working really great because it got these little long stringy pieces, so I had to go through a few Q-tips to try to maintain a small tip. but it worked for the most part and it was still pretty good. I tried to use it really thick. Fortunately, my jar of the watercolor grounds is a little old, so my stuff is thick anyway. So if it's too goopy, you might end up with your Nina cardstock getting a little soggy, so be careful about that. Uh, if you wanna put some out on a plate, then you can let it dry out a little bit. Uh, this is the card that's going to be on IGTV, so you'll see a different way to use the watercolor grounds for the snow. And here we have holiday scene week, a little preview of what you're going to see all week long. The links to all those stamps are on the blog so that you'll be able to see all of them. If you want to buy them before they run out, they might have already. Who knows? Because, you know, that's the way things roll around here. I will see you guys later on. Have a great day.